And now for one of my favorite features on the MVS 6500 series, aux bus mixing. How many times have you had multiple studio monitors on the set with different sources feeding every one, and as luck would have it, the director wants a dissolve in each of them? I could use ME banks, but it's far easier to use an aux bus mix, and I have a lot more aux buses than MEs. So over here on my multi-display, I've got aux bus 1 and aux bus 3. It's going to be easy to show how to set this up if we go to Engineering Setup, Switcher, Output, and we select aux mixing. Now, it's very important to understand that aux bus mixing is done in pairs of aux buses. It needs two aux buses to mix together to create one. And they have to be on adjacent outputs. It's very important when you're wiring your system up. So here, I've got aux bus 1 and aux bus 2 on adjacent outputs. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to set up aux 1 and 2 mix. And I'm going to hit set. And again, we like to do stuff where we kind of arm it and you have to execute it. So yellow is meaning that you've selected it, but we haven't turned it on yet. I'm going to go down here to aux bus 3, and I'm going to set these outputs to be an aux bus 3 and 4 mix. And I'm going to hit execute. So you notice here that aux bus 2 and 4 have grayed out because I don't really have any control or even really any use for those anymore because aux bus 2 is used to feed aux bus 1 and 4 to 3 and so on and so on. So over on the control panel, we have a special button down here on the lower right hand corner of the cross point area called aux mix. And what this is going to do is for each pair of aux buses, we can decide whether or not we want the aux bus to mix or not. So for instance, here's aux bus 1, and right now aux mix is turned off. If I change things, you can see that I've got a cut going in aux 1. If I turn aux mix on, it's now armed. If I select another machine, it's going to automatically dissolve in here. Now, if I want to set the transition rate, it's very easy to do. We're going to go to the miscellaneous menu on the touch screen. And you go down to transition. By the way, this is a great place to set every single transition rate on the entire switcher. But if you go one over, you're going to see aux mix. So you can see I'm in pairs, one, three, five, seven, nine, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to touch the knob portion on the screen, and I'm going to set aux bus one to have a 15 frame transition rate. Now, it's only 15 frames to dissolve. And I can set these, of course, independently. I'm going to go to aux 3, and let's set that for, oh, I don't know, 45 frames. Let's make it really, really long. So we can go over here now to aux 3, and let's change it. Now, why are we cutting? Remember that the aux mix button is set on each pair of aux buses. We never turned it on for aux 3, so aux 3 is still in a cut mode. So let's turn it on, and now we will dissolve on our slow dissolve here, and go over to aux 1 and do it that way. Now, each set of aux buses has its own unique transition generator. And to prove that, I'm going to set aux bus 3 to something really, really long, like 700 frames. So let's go over to aux bus 3, and we'll make it do a transition. While that's happening, I can still go to aux 1 and do another transition over here. Now, it's really important to understand that aux bus transitions are not using any resources whatsoever in the switcher. They have their own silicon for their own transition generators. 